I'm going to share with you three two-word phrases that are highly controversial and are going to be incredibly irritating to you, even if you've been with me through the duration of this video series, which we're on video 12. And if you have not watched the first 11 videos, then you're going to not really be with us as far as how we've journeyed through trying to let God help us have a right heart in dealing with this subject matter. So if you haven't, I, I encourage you, please stop the video now. Go back to video one and watch video one in order all the way through 11 and then come back to 12. Uh, if you are still with me for video 12, uh, I think we have a misunderstanding. And I'm gonna say progressively in this video, three two word phrases that I wanna ask you, just like with the other videos, please pause, please listen, please wait and think through what's being said and ask yourself, is not is it not legitimate, uh, the concepts? Don't just have a knee-jerk reaction to shut it down. Otherwise, you kind of miss the point of the whole series. The whole point of the series is an open heart to, to come to the table and say, all right, let me hear all the information and consider and be open to considering that maybe the information on various sides is correct. And I want to explore that and see what Jesus would have me do with that information, with that knowledge. So the first, I hope you're ready. <laughs> the first phrase is white guilt. I've seen, heard a number of people say that I'm not going to apologize for being white. And that's true. We, we don't need to apologize for being white. Neither does someone who's black need to apologize for being black. We were born with the color of our skin. That's not really something that's in our control. It has nothing to do with our character, uh, what we're capable of and all of those things. So it's kind of irrelevant in that sense, but it's not entirely irrelevant in the sense of the way people get treated and such uh, and to our identity. But as far as value and worth, it, it's not relevant and we shouldn't judge each other based on it and, and so yes I don't need to feel guilty for being white but when people say that I should not have to feel guilty for being white don't want that person or the person who's hearing that comment ask themselves why are they saying that just like we've been doing throughout this series why are they saying I shouldn't have to feel guilty for being white they're resisting something. What are they resisting? Now, sometimes there are people who are apologizing for things that they didn't do. Now, that's not always a wrong thing because you do that. When someone dies, someone has a loved one who dies, you, you tell them, I'm sorry for your loss. You didn't cause it, but you are sorry that they went through it. So there's nothing wrong with saying, uh, I'm sorry that America uh, exercised slavery and segregation and, and those sort of things. There's nothing wrong with that. Uh, if you're saying, I'm sorry and it was my fault, uh, most likely it's not, unless you're uh, implicit uh, in, in some of the present actions. But most of the time, I don't think that's what's happening when people say, I'm, I'm sorry, uh, you know, I shouldn't feel guilty for being white. I think what they're saying is at some point they feel like they're being asked to feel guilty and they don't want to. And I think where it shows up a lot of times is when people push that we had a segregation past, we had a slavery past we had a we presently have African Americans who are being shot for not legitimate reasons we have scenarios in which uh, African Americans are being slighted in various ways pretty much because of the color of their skin and we're kind of uh, in a position to take advantage of that those of us who are white and uh, we should feel bad that that's the way that it is. We should want to do whatever we can to correct it and not participate in, in that. Uh, we, we should be in that position. 
And so to simply say, well, I don't have to feel guilty. And then what does that mean then? What do I do now? I just ignore that there are still after effects to slavery and segregation, that I just ignore that there are uh, issues with the police, law and, and employment and all that stuff and where people live. Do, do I just ignore that that's a reality because I don't have to feel guilty? Um, really examine your heart. Again, are you just, are you resisting conviction that might even be coming from the Holy Spirit because I don't have to fall prey to this whole white guilt thing. Uh, again, there's a difference between feeling guilty because you have white, uh, you have skin that's white versus feeling sympathetic, compassionate, concerned, concerned about the action, maybe even convicted yourself if you have behaved in racist or prejudiced ways, biased ways, uh, then maybe I, I need to take a look at that. And, and so, so there's two sides of that coin. And I think most of the time when people say, I don't have to have, feel guilty for being white, I think it's likely the bad heart scenario in that case. So that's one phrase, white guilt. Second phrase, white, you ready for this? <laughs> uh, big taboo phrase here, I hope you're ready. White privilege. A lot of people, when they hear that, they object to it passionately. But what am I objecting to when someone says white privilege? Now, somebody might use that and define it one way or another. Most, most African Americans, most people that are promoting the, the black cause, when they say white privilege, they do not mean that if you're white, you're wealthy. If you're white, you you had everything handed to you. If you're white, you don't have any troubles and challenges in life, and heartaches, misery. If, if you're white, you didn't have any troubles. Uh, they're not saying that you had like a, a first class life from birth till now. That's not what white privilege means. If that's what that meant, I, I could see where someone takes offense, but that's not actually what it means. And, I, and again, going back to one of our other videos, uh, consider what you're arguing against. Are you arguing against the extreme view? Are you arguing against a misunderstanding of a phrase? Or are you arguing against what is actually being said? So here's what actually is meant by most people who say white privilege in the black community or those that are supporting the black cause. When an African-American gets pulled over by a police officer, one of the things that they're considering is, am I gonna die today? They're actually concerned that they may lose their life today because a police officer might misunderstand one of their actions, take it uh, as a threat and shoot and kill them. I'm white, that never crosses my mind. I've been pulled over, pulled over by the police and it never crossed my mind I was gonna lose my life that day. I have that privilege to not have to deal with that concern because I'm white, that's a privilege doesn't make me wealthy, doesn't mean I've never gone through challenges and difficulties, just means that there's something that I don't have to deal with that the black community does. Uh, I don't have to work extra hard to, to climb up this hill in order to make my way in life and get a good paying job and live in a good community and get in a good school. Uh, rely on uh, affirmative action and certain laws to help me get aided to be able to get to a place where where a white person there's really no question except for my merit on getting a job getting into a certain school in a certain community and my possessions and such uh, it's not the same often for the black community that is a privilege it doesn't mean that I automatically become wealthy or get the job or get in the school or get in the community it just means that I don't have an extra uh, problem on my record just because of the color of my skin. And so that's a privilege. I don't have to deal with that because I'm white. Again, it doesn't mean I'm not, it doesn't mean I'm wealthy. It doesn't mean I'm well off. It doesn't mean I get everything handed to me. It doesn't mean that, that I don't have any difficulties or challenges. It just means there's something that the black community has to deal with that I don't, and I have the privilege of not dealing with that. 
And so before you get all irritated and angry about how there's no such thing as white privilege, why don't you think it through again? And maybe we need to be a little careful because possibly while trying to resist being insulted ourselves, we're actually insult insulting others. Because we're looking at people who don't have to deal with things that we have to deal with and we're saying, that's not true, you know, you don't have it so bad and, and, and just kind of belittling where they are. So hopefully you'll, you'll take a different view on the phrase white privilege. Last one, and it's last because it's probably <laughs> the most uh, controversial phrase of the three. And again, I hope you will let your heart be open to consider its meaning. You ready? Last one. White supremacy. What does that mean? Do, do we as white people actually think that we're superior to black people? Well, here's the problem. And people have done studies of this where they take applications, phony applications and send them to a, a company and they on purpose make those who have more black sounding names have the better record, the more hireable record on their application. And the people who are white are, are going to have a lesser, uh, lesser credentials on their application. People who have black names don't seem to get called in for interviews, even though they have superior records. Why? Because if a person sees that someone's black, uh, versus hiring someone who's white, there is a, whether it's subconscious or not, and I'm telling you, I challenge you, pay attention to it. There's a subconscious idea in many people's heads that black people are trouble, they're loud, they're not agreeable, they're difficult, they're poverty stricken, they, they're not cultured, they don't know how to uh, manage high society life, and they might prove me wrong at some point and then maybe I'll hire them. But, but in the end, initially, when people come across a black person, they think that they're less than. And they think white is the norm. Let me give you an example of that. How long was it before a Barbie doll was black? Oh, Barbie's not black, Barbie's white. So you have to make sure all the Barbie dolls are white. What about all the baby, all the baby dolls? What about hair care products? Uh, how many hair care products are for white people versus black people? And you might say, well, there's more white than black. That's true. But how long was it before? I mean, maybe try to put yourself in the shoes of being black and seeing if you could find something that matches uh, uh, your black skin with hair care products. Maybe even what about band-aids? What color? You know, band-aids are skin color, right? Band-Aids are made to be like your skin color so that they don't stand out as much. Well, what skin color are they made like? White skin color. Well, but, but there's more white people than there are black people. Yeah, but are there any black Band-Aids? Are there? Because say, let's say there's 20% of the population is African-American, just throwing a number out there. Well then, uh, that would mean one out of every five Band-Aid boxes should be for black skin. Now, I think we might have made some progress there, but I, I challenge you, go to the store and say, and think, of me, think in your head, I'm black and I need Band-Aids. I'm black and I need hair care products. I'm black and I want baby dolls. What about our movies, TV shows? Who are typically the heroes? Take, for example, uh, Marvel. Who are all the superheroes in Marvel? You got Captain America, white, Iron Man, white, Thor, white, Incredible Hawk, white, uh, Hawkeye, white, Black Widow, white. <laughs> I mean, all of them are white except for, uh, I think, two. You have, I think, Falcon and Black Panther are black. And those were really, I think, more latter additions. I mean, even if you take in consideration the, the villains are likely mostly all white. 
Uh, in fact, the problem is, is that we're kind of getting a little better knowing we need to throw a character in there. But if you look in the history, go back to the 80s and ask yourself, how many of the superheroes are black? It should be what, one out of every five or so? But it's not. In fact, most of the time it's, it's zero black and the rest and everybody else is white. Why? You go, well, the hero can't be black. That's white supremacy where we tend to think it's better to be white. We tend to want things to be white. They're made for white. Everything is kind of with the mindset that white is the norm. It might be the majority, but it's not the norm. It's not abnormal to be a human who's black. And so when the black community talks about white supremacy, that's what they're referring to. They're not saying that whites are all KKK members and skinheads and Nazis and all that stuff. They're saying that whites tend to think that the norm is white. And there's a difference between majority and norm. These are challenging phrases. White guilt, white privilege, white supremacy. I hope that you can work those things out. And I hope that we can start having a different view of those phrases so that maybe our minds might not be closed to issues that are possibly before us that we need to work out. And again, I'm glad that some of them are being worked out, but it took a lot of yelling and resistance and fighting, scratching, scratching their way in to even get close to start to provide some correction to that. But we still have a long way to go and I hope that we can get there. Uh, we're gonna get there if we stay open and we actually stop clinging to our ideology uh, and our traditions and asking ourselves, where does Christ want me, to, want me to go? He wants me to love God, he wants me to love people. Where does he want me to go with this? And I think we can get to a better place if more of us have an open heart. We don't try to share this video uh, video series aggressively because I only want people that are actually gonna be open to consider the thoughts. But if you know somebody that you think might be open to consider these thoughts, then please share this video with, with them. Uh, please, if you would, uh, let me know if I'm communicating clearly by hit, hitting the like button uh, or leaving me a comment. If you have any questions along the way about this journey or any of the previous videos, please leave a, leave a question in comments or Facebook message me or uh, send me an email at dleveck at bethelpgh.org and I would be glad to answer your questions. Uh, if you would, please subscribe to the channel, hit the notification button in YouTube or on Facebook, follow the page so that you'll continue to receive updates as, as we continue to figure out how to have an open heart and get this right. God bless you.